see you there. Welcome back to Off the Fence. I'm Finch, the comedic superhero with the Flyers Cape. And my next guest is an author, speaker, and trainer, focusing on the power of applied psychology to help businesses improve their marketing, sales, and delivery. And guess what, guys? He's right here tonight in the peek through. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jonathan Pritchard. I like to call him Joe Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've I've been watching the show, and you have gotten so many hallelujahs and amens for me here in the green room. I, I was just like, yes, yes, preach. I am on the right show with the right people. Yeah, you you are talking my language, man. I'm glad to be here. Man, I am glad you are here. It was such an honor uh, when it came across that you was going to be on our show, and I was like, Oh, man, we're going to have a great conversation. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. So you're known as the life mentalist. Why is yeah. that? All right. So a mentalist is a flavor of magician that has specialized in mind reading tricks. So basically, by the time I had my first paying gig at 13 years old, I had already been doing this half my lifetime. That's that's kind of it. So. I don't claim to be psychic. I don't claim to have the mojo. I don't have the gift of the seventh son of a seventh son. It's <laughs> all just applied psychology, showmanship, and moxie. And just having the gumption to pull this stuff off on stages all over the world. It's literally taken me around the world. And it's kind of one of those things where you do it for years, and then you forget that it might be special. Uh. <laughs> so all the all the techniques and principles I would use on stage, I realized that from talking to audiences all over the world that, you know, I've been doing this myself in my own life in order to be able to do these kinds of amazing things. And the way I think about things isn't normal. It's not average, right? It's not so, average. So that's where I took it from the stage in entertaining people, helping them forget their problems for an hour, but then they go right back to them. Mm -hmm. Well, if I could take what I've learned and apply to my own life, share it with as many people as possible and give them the chance to think bigger, think differently, imagine different futures than what they're currently on track to do. Well, to me, that's a much better way to spend my time here on planet Earth. So that's my mission is to try to help as many people as possible in the biggest way that I can. And weirdly, that's why I love doing business training. Mm. Like business can only sustain itself if it's profitable. If it creates more value in the world mm. than it takes to make it, that's winning. And if you can help more businesses, you help more employees, you help mm -hmm. put more daughters through college, you help pay for more ice skating lessons. Every client and customer that does business with that business benefits from the work that that business does. Everybody wins at an order of magnitude more than I could ever do talking one on one to people. Mm -hmm. So that's why like, I love helping people and it's just a lot of fun. OK, now now you you have this thing where you say motivation is the worst strategy for success. Why is that, Jonathan? Motivation is a feeling. It is a momentary sensation that you can't trick yourself into feeling. You can hype yourself up. You can listen to death metal, whatever it is that gets you hype. You can do that. Ultimately you realize that you were looking for external circumstances mm -hmm. to guide your internal decision-making. And the longer you do that, the longer you're a slave to external circumstances, you're letting somebody else dictate your life. Mm. So motivation is, it's nice when it happens, but you know what? The winners show up, they work, they practice, even when they don't feel like it discipline will get you farther than motivation could ever dream of doing. So that's why to me, people who straight up pedal motivation, they're like, I'm a motivational speaker. <laughs> yeah. You're selling, you're selling something that's not even as much fun as a movie. And then it's gone in a week. And now that business is back to baseline because everybody's rah, rah run out. 
Oh, right. so they're going to bring you back in for another twenty thousand dollar gig <laughs> on next Friday? That's a nice racket. You know, I wish I I wish I didn't have the honor and integrity that that would allow me. You know, like I would love to be able to do that racket. That'd be great. Just oh. my mama raised me right. I can't do that. So that's why I just have a fundamental just mm -mm about <laughs> about motivation. Yeah, and it's crazy that you say that because you think about. Uh, motivational speaking as a such, you know, people who call them motivational speaking and life coaching, you know, two of the biggest hustles across the country. And when I used to speak, I used to tell people I'm not a motivational speaker. That's the that's the basic term that they give people who stand in front of large crowds or in front of a crowd and speak regardless. But I'm not a motivational speaker because I, I need you to be empowered to go do something be, after I have left the room, after I've left your city. That's, you got to be empowered. That's not just standing on the stage. Yeah, it's like, not just standing on the stage. Yeah. I'm going to motivate you to learn how to be in front of a room full of sad sack losers like you and have them pay you a hundred bucks to learn how to be up here like a big winner like me. So join my... <laughs> My limited time only offer. It's like, oh, what a what a sleaze bag operation! I just I can't abide by it, man. <laughs> All right, so you talk about self confidence, and you say successful people are comfortable asking for what they want. Now, this is one of those things that I think plagues a lot of people, even in romantic relationship, let alone business relationship. Right? Yeah. Look, it is not it is not your job to talk yourself out of what you want. Let other people say no, right? Like okay. have the audacity to own up to what it is you want out of life and then ask for it. My mom, the genius, told me early, you never ask. The answer is always no. I like that one a little better than do it and ask for forgiveness later, that kind of thing. Right. So I, I would much rather ask and get the no Right. But so many people are so afraid of the no they might get that they guarantee they can't get the yes because they won't ever ask for it. They, they just talk themselves out of it. And and that's the gumption part. That's the moxie. All the big opportunities I've had is because I was dumb enough to ask for them. I wasn't smart enough to know that I wasn't ready. I wasn't smart enough to know that I didn't have the qualifications for it. I was dumb enough to go, you know, that looks like a cool thing I want to do. Hey, can I do that? Yeah, sure. Come on over. All right. Boom. That's the secret. Everybody wants to know the secret to success. And I just showed up and asked for it. Like, how stupid can you get? Pretty stupid. And you still do all right. <laughs> so so you, what do you think, in your opinion, in your, in your field, in your travels, in, in, in your lifetime, what do you think people, why people are so afraid to ask for what they want, especially when it comes to romantic relationships? Man, in fear of treading over ground you already went over in the first segment, they don't know it. They don't know to ask for it. They don't even know what they want. Mm. You ask somebody what they want, they can give you two days worth of what they don't want. Here's what I don't like. I don't like that. I don't like this. I don't want to see any of that in my house. None of that. None of that over there. This is bad. That's awful. Okay, that's great. What do you want? I don't I don't know. Like what what do you want to work towards? What do you mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, I legit just think that most people haven't spent five minutes really thinking about what they really, truly want to spend their time creating here on planet Earth. Look around, see what everybody else is doing. Don't raise any ruckus. Don't don't rock the boat. All of that stuff. Stay in line. Do what you're told. The, the standard social narrative. Do good in school to get into college, to get a good job, stay there, retire with the gold watch, the 2.54 kids. There you go. There's your whole life story. No twists, no turns, no nothing. Just, boy, that's a straight shot to the grave over there. And, boy, I'm on the highway to it. Like, No, thank you, man. No, thank you. Just take some time to really figure out what you want. That's the first part of changing where you're going. Right, because most people again, they're just kind of on the conveyor belt. It's easy, no effort. It it's lukewarm. It's right. not cold. It's not too hot. It's it's all right. So, 
not having the imagination mm-hmm. of being able to picture what they might want. And then second is just not believing that it could even be possible in the first place. If you have the audacity to think things could be different, you've gone farther than most people. Mm -hmm. After that is the, well, believing that you can make that happen is a real big mountain to get over too. But man, human beings, we're not that complicated, man. Like there, there aren't that many new stories. That's true. Whatever you're going through, there's been who knows how many millions of people throughout all of human history that have been Mm -hmm. through their flavor of it and every possible outcome, good and bad, has happened. So you know what? Why not you be one of the people that made it through through the good good ways? Mm. And and that's so true, man. You know, I think I think what I'm going to take from just this little part of the conversation is. I can have any woman I want. I got to believe that we can be together forever and she's going to love me and I can love her. Right. That's, that's the whole thing. Right. Just believe you can do it. Go after it and don't be afraid of it. And it can happen just as you say it will. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to need some skills to make that <laughs> dream come true. Right. Like that's that's how the magic works. I, I love my job because. Mm. Everybody goes, X doesn't work like magic. And I'm like, magic doesn't work like magic. Right. I'm here to tell you the way that it works is that the magician, the mentalist, the performer first defines what effect do I want to have on the audience? Hmm. Do I want them to think I can levitate somebody? Do I want them to think I can just make tigers appear? You've got to define what the Hmm. effect is first. Then you go, what? What fun story could we tell around that outcome? Mm -hmm. And then you look at, all right, what's the method? How in the world am I actually going to pull this off? Once you've got that figured out, then you practice. And sometimes you can practice for two years straight without telling anybody. That's why you had another hallelujah for me. Right. You don't tell people the magic tricks you're working on. Because it's like seeing a painting in the middle of it, and everybody goes, why'd you use that color? I'm like, it's not done yet. That's just there as a placeholder. Well, that, that's an awful color. It's not going to be there at the end. So showing people unfinished work isn't as good as putting it up in the, in the gallery, right? right? So practice your skills in secret where nobody can hound you, nobody can ruin your confidence, nobody can derail mm-hmm. you. Practice it until it's perfect then you can debut it. Then you'll know if it's good or not. (laughs) Yeah. So you talk about persuasion and influence, and I want you to share with my audience tonight, what's the difference between manipulation, coercion, influence, and persuasion? Because in this day and age of attempting to improve ourselves, we can be manipulated. we We can be coerced. We can be influenced. And, you know, it's like we can't be persuaded to move in a different direction than the one that we anticipated for ourselves. So explain to people what's the difference between persuasion and influence. This is one of my favorite things because all those terms get lumped in together Mm -hmm. and it's just like sales is a icky word. Everybody goes, oh, sales is disgusting. Oh, it's gross. Sales is one of the best things ever. You're trying to sell your friends on this is the better restaurant to go to, Mm. right? So it's all humanity is just persuasion. All of it is influence, right? So there's a kind of a graph I like to draw, which is who is it that is benefiting from this interaction? Mm. At the outcome, is it just you at the expense of everybody else? Or on the other end, is it everybody involved? The win-win and win-win-win and orders of magnitude winning. That's Mm. the side you want to be on. Now, the vertical axis is what are you trying to change? Mm. Are you trying to change somebody's belief or are you trying to change their behavior? So if I'm trying to benefit myself at everybody else's expense by changing their beliefs, that's usually through lying and managing the narrative. Mm -hmm. That is manipulation. Mm. You're trying to manipulate their perceptions to lead to a conclusion about you. That's not true. Right. Okay. That's the lying, cheating, stealing, that kind of thing. (laughs) If I'm trying to change your behavior to my benefit, 
at your expense. That's coercion. Mm. That's me pulling a knife on you and saying, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you think. Give me your money. So I want your behavior to obey me. And I'm going to use force or the threat of force and violence to make you do what I want. So okay. that's what coercion is all about. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're benefiting everybody and I'm like, I know this restaurant, it, it has the vegan thing you like, it has that pork thing you like, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to change their behavior, I don't need them to believe that it's the best restaurant. I just need them to go to it. That's what influence is, right? I'm just trying to influence their decision of where to go. And then ultimately it helps everybody and they're like, yeah, this is a really good, really good choice. I love it. Right. If you want to change their beliefs, that's usually the most effective way to affect behavior, right? Mm -hmm. If you change the way somebody believes about the world, their their behavior will naturally flow downstream from that. That's what that's what persuasion is all about. Right. So that's kind of the matrix of mm -hmm. being able to see what somebody's trying to do to you, with you, for you, and and be able to feel out that vibe. Now, one of the kind of wrinkles is that your beliefs influence your behaviors and then your behaviors influence how you believe about yourself. Mm -hmm. You can say, I'm a person who would never do X. And then suddenly you found out you did X. <laughs> suddenly your beliefs are going to be different, right? Right, right. So it's not so much separate poles of a, of a spectrum. It's just kind of a circle mm -hmm. of a cycle of beliefs, reinforced behaviors, reinforced beliefs, reinforced behaviors, and that kind of thing. So it's not as different as as that nice, pretty two dimensional view looks. But that's a really good way to navigate what's influence, what's persuasion, what's manipulation and co coercion. All right. So now this is one of the favorite things of all the great things that you encompass that I love about this conversation is communication. <laughs> <laughs> I said they're like Oprah with my Oprah voice. <laughs> you, you get a communication. Gone. You yeah. get a communication. You get it. <laughs> but here's the thing. Learning how to share the right information. That's, that's one of the things you say. At the right time, in the right way. <laughs> Jonathan, listen, man. I am. I have learned this about myself. Because oftentimes we think we're communicating one way and we're really not. And so I love that part about how to communicate the way that is the secret to good communication in every aspect of your life is communication is this, ladies and gentlemen, and I ain't going to take it away from Jenica. He can explain a little bit more to them. This is his thing, but sharing how to share the right information at the right time in the right way. Please elaborate, Jonathan. Again, it all goes back to magic tricks. It is a great, great context to understand what in the world I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, seven, eight years old, I would do the magic trick for my parents. My parents are saints. If, if you're an adult with a child who does magic, I am sorry. You, <laughs> you are, you're in for it. All right. But with patience, you can cultivate a curiosity about life that will serve them forever. So don't kill it. All right, you got a big responsibility. And my parents helped cultivate that in me because they were very encouraging. They were very enthusiastic. Oh, yeah, I'll watch yet another card trick. Okay, <laughs> Jonathan. So I would I would learn the trick. I would read the book. The book says, do this, say this, do this, magic happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just like baking a cake. It's a mm -hmm. recipe for amazement. It's mm -hmm. just so cool. So you do that, you practice everything, you got it down pat, you're like, yeah, I got this. You go show your parents, and then they're like, oh, that was fun. But Jonathan, I saw you flash the card with the thing and the stuff, so you, you want to kind of be aware of doing that. I know I did the right thing. I know I said the right stuff. I didn't do it the right way. Mm. And if you're missing any one of those elements, the communication's not going to happen. You're not going to get the magic trick. Mm. So magic tricks are just a function of communication skills. And much like an artist who can paint a super believable dragon that's not real, the only way they get there is by painting reality perfectly and mm. learning what reality looks like. Only then can you perfectly represent something that could never exist in reality. So magicians have to study exactly what real magic would look like and what reality looks like 
so that they can create a perfect illusion of reality. And that is by saying the right thing, doing the right thing at the mm -hmm. right time in the right way. Once you get all that together, then you can have communication. And the way you find out what all those are is shutting up and asking really good questions. <laughs> and you think you understand what in the world's going on. You're about a third of the way there. You need to ask at least a couple more rounds of questions to really understand. Then you explain what it is you understand. Mm. Then you'll see you got it wrong. Right. Because I, I always thought that that was a ridiculous thing. OK, repeat back what you understood that person to say. And I was like, what a goofy, hokey gimmick. Like, that's the stupidest thing ever. You try it. You'll be amazed at how often you get it wrong. You're like, right. no, that's not it at all. What I was saying. Part of it is you can't communicate what it is you understood. Another thing is you didn't understand what it is they were communicating. So that's why it, it's an ongoing conversation. It's it's not a one and done kind of a thing. And, and that's so true because I think I think it's it's it always is based upon how we were taught to communicate. You know what I'm saying? And when when you're taught to communicate in a certain way, um, you gravitate to this style, you gravitate to this way and you believe in yourself, in your head. This I'm communicating effectively to the person I'm attempting to share information or share something with, not realizing that you're not doing that at all. Because just like you said, when it comes to the magic trick, you miss one element of the communication valve the entire spiral of communication goes out of whack because he's like, well, I thought I said this because I'm, I'm telling you, man, I found I've been somebody told me one time uh, early this year. They said, I, I don't think you communicate as effectively, as effectively as you might think you're communicating to me. And I was like, you know what? You're right, because I realized what I wanted to say and the way I displayed it, the, the way I said it. I didn't say what I wanted to say and how I needed to say it. So, yeah, it, 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 it threw a thing where it made them feel like I was saying one thing, but I was attempting to say something else. And then we try to wonder, well, how in the heck is it that somebody, oh, somebody, you just don't understand me. No, you're just not communicating properly. That's what that is, right? Exactly. A super, super shorthand way of, of saying that is communication is what is heard, not what is said. <laughs> Now, now, what about listening skills when people hear something outside of what somebody said? Because I find that a lot. And, and I'm not saying this, ladies, but it seems like I hear a lot of men talking about this when it comes to 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 women. Like, hey, I said one thing and I've been in a room. I, and it's even happened to me where the man said one thing. She heard something different or she said one thing and he heard something different. Does those two things play in the, a, a part in each other? Listening as well as talking to people? Yes. Uh, listening oftentimes is difficult if you don't trust yourself mm. because you're thinking, oh, what am I going to say? Oh, I got to remember to say this thing. And you don't trust yourself to have that eloquent, perfect answer at the right time in the right place. And oh, I, I must remember this witty quip. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't trust yourself. So you're constantly thinking about what it is you're going to be saying instead of being present with what this other person is sharing with you. Right. So that can be difficult. Uh, another thing is somebody talking at you without your attention. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. I have to be fully aware that somebody's trying to communicate with me in order for me to hear it. Like right. I told you, like, well, I didn't hear it. <laughs> so, so there's, there's that two way street part of it. The other angle is explicit and implicit communication. Uh oh, that's there's, a common word, Jonathan. You got to break that one down now. <laughs> so there's the stated facts of what you said. Then there's the context around why you said it, how you said it, who you said it to. You said it with that stink eye this time. So, so you could intend to be as direct and concrete as possible. Uh -huh. But if you're missing the whole point about what this fight is about in the first place, it's not about the thing that, that you're literally talking about. It's about the feel it, right? So, so you've always got to understand what it is you're trying to directly communicate and what is indirectly being communicated. And a lot of people have a difficult time appreciating how big a part of indirect communication 
human relationships are. So it's almost never about the the direct part. Why, why won't you just say what you want for dinner, <laughs> right? Like almost none of it is direct. Mm. Most of it is indirect. And the sooner you wake up to, well, there's a lot going on beyond just the words I'm using. You get a lot better at listening. Man, that is so awesome, man. Look, I appreciate everything you said here tonight, man. You are a ball, a barrel of fun to talk to, man. It's been so great. Uh, how can people connect with you if they want to connect with you online? Best place to go is jonathanpritchard.me. That's, that's my hub. I have one fire, which is a passion about life and a curiosity about human beings and how they work. Mm. I have about 11 million irons in that fire. So I've, I've got artwork, speaking, writing, articles, martial arts, all sorts of stuff. So that website is my hub. And I'm on Twitter most active. I change my username every once in a while. So mm. whatever I give you now won't make any sense <laughs> later. So just go to jonathanpritchard.me or mindreader online, mindreader.online is is a lot easier for people to spell <laughs> got you got you hey are you on, are you on clubhouse i am not on clubhouse man Jonathan, we got to get you in the clubhouse man. Listen, I, man don't don't you threaten me with a good time listen so so i'm trying to think how i can get you in um because you can download the app but if you're not in my contacts they won't send me the notification saying hey jonathan is trying to get in the clubhouse he's on the wait list do you want to walk them in? Um, so right, right, right. I'm, a, I'm going to have to send you my my number offline so that um, then you can text me and you say, hey, I'm going to finish. I'm going to download the app right now because I would love to have you in on my conversation on Thursday, man. Um, right on. Think you, you'll be great. So I will uh, I'll get Andrea to email you afterwards and she'll send you my number. And then you can just text me yours. I can put you on my phone. You download the app and then hopefully they'll say, hey. Jonathan Pritchett is trying to get in. Will you let him in? I'll say yes. And then we can get you in on, on Thursday. Okay. Outstanding. I, I, I love your mojo. I'm all in. <laughs> all right, guys. Jonathan Pritchett's here. Make sure you check him out. Go follow him on social media. And Jonathan, thank you so much. We'll be right back with more Off the Fence. I'm Fitch. Yo, 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 yo. You're in the mix. The world's finest, man. DJ. Just down. Like I have the radio on the telly. Oh, the